Tonight, let's stand together and we'll sing uh, off our song sheet there. God wants to hear you sing. That's number 15 in a gold hymnal that we don't use very often. It's a great song. There change from class in tight, down at the jail at night. Still all inside, this would not be this man. Said it's time to lift our voice, sing and praise the Lord. Let's prove that we will trust Him, come what may. God wants to hear you sing when the waves are crashing round you, when the fiery guards surround you, when despair is all you see. God wants to hear your voice when the wisest man is spoken. Says your circumstances are hopeless as can be. That's when God wants to hear you see. He wants to hear our praise on our cheerful days. When the pleasant times outweigh the bad I fall. When the suffering comes along, and we see sing singing songs, that is when we bless the Father's heart. God wants to hear you sing when the waves are crashing round you. When the fiery guards surround you, when despair is all you see, God wants to hear When the wisest man has spoken, such circumstances as hopeless as can be, that's when God wants to hear you see. Amen. You may be seated. And uh, God does want to hear you sing. Amen. And uh, we'll just keep singing along. Amen. Amen. And uh, that'll be great. Let's go ahead and take out our prayer pages tonight. Who needs a prayer page? Raise your hand. And uh, we'll get one out to you. I do want to remind you that this Sunday we are going to be having our Thanksgiving offering. And uh, that is going to go to help us uh, uh, in the year right uh, at church. And so... Uh, 
make up the different areas that we need to make up in. And uh, so I hope that you will pray and uh, seek the Lord about what he would have you to give for Thanksgiving. Uh, by the way, giving is part of Thanksgiving. And uh, it's hard to be uh, thankful without giving. So uh, I hope that you will uh, be a part of that. <clears throat> Notice uh, in our uh, first page there, under our country, continue to pray for our election. And uh, uh, we would have thought maybe that we would have not been praying about it anymore. But uh, this is what God has. Amen. And so uh, let's continue to pray for that. Pray for all the different uh, uh, lawsuits that are going on uh, in regards to this. And uh, let's pray that uh, that righteousness will be done. And uh, we, we really ought to pray for that. I was telling the, uh, the young people in chapel today, uh, you know, regardless of who the president is, the Bible says the heart of the king uh, is in the hand of the Lord. And, um, uh, you know, sometimes we do get a little bit of a defeatist attitude of, uh, you know, oh, my goodness, what's going to happen? You know, uh, you know, we want the best people to be in these positions. Uh, but, you know, uh, I do serve a God that uh, used Pharaoh. Right. I do serve a God that used Nebuchadnezzar. I do serve a God that, that made these kings do what he wanted them to do. And so uh, uh, let's not be defeatist here. Um, you know, God can use anybody, and, uh, and uh, he has. So uh, anyway, let's pray for the election. Pray that they'll get that sorted out, uh, get taken care of all the things that need to be taken care of. And then, um, you know, let's... Uh, uh, pray for that. Under our other needs, uh, please pray for uh, the Morley and Clark family. And of course, um, this is uh, Jane Clark passed away this week. And uh, the Clarks uh, were members of our church for many years. And uh, my brother Clark was our first bus driver years ago. And uh, they were here when I first came and uh, were here for a little while. And so just pray for their family as a uh, uh, they need comfort there. And then uh, pray for the Johnson family as well. And uh, they visit our church a few times here. They live right out here in the country. And uh, Mrs. Johnson's mom passed away uh, that, that she had been the caregiver for for many years. And so just pray for them um, uh, for comfort there as well. And then uh, Brother Figueroa's brother Joel, uh, pray for wisdom uh, in that. And then um, under health needs and church family, continue to pray for Mrs. Elliott, and uh, she's got an upcoming surgery, and so pray there for that. And then Mrs. Gillum uh, texted me, uh, pray for her health, and uh, she has a procedure that's going to be coming up there and involves um, um, doing something with the cancer spots on her liver. And so uh, just pray there uh, for uh, that need uh, there. She's had a little bit of pain there, and so they're, they're working on uh, trying to correct that. So just pray for that uh, situation. I forget the actual name of the procedure, but uh, uh, basically I think it, I think it's zapping the cancer spots on the liver. And so uh, just pray there for that. And then uh, pray for Brother Steve Rogers uh, there for his wrist and work. And it uh, looks like they might be sending him back to work. And so uh, just uh, pray there for, for safety there and then pray that they can get the thing worked out there with... Uh, uh, his wrist there. And then um, uh, under uh, cancer prayer requests, um, pray for Mrs. Dittman and just uh, pray there. We've been praying for her for a while, just for the chemo and the pain, and uh, just pray that God would do a special work there. And under help means family and friends, Summer Tongi, and uh, just health there uh, and the need of the kidney transplant. And then uh, Mrs. Joseph's mom, uh, for her health, uh, just she's been sick a lot lately, and so pray for her. And then um, uh, the Ely's friend, uh, Lindy Wilson, uh, is having back surgery uh, on the 20th. And is that the Mrs. Wilson that I know? Uh, is that what? It's Jim wife. Jim's wife. wife. Jim Jr.'s yes. wife. Okay, wife. so it's not the yeah. one. Okay. No, that's Jim's. Okay. okay, I was trying to figure that out. So. There's Jim Sr. and Jim Jr., and I wasn't yeah. sure which wife it was. Well, so. Jim Jr. was the one that had to have his foot activated. Right, and right, all right. That. This is his I met them, but, uh, <laughs> right. All right, uh, let's go to the back page there, and uh, our student of the week is Ben Rogers. Thank you. <laughs> Be a rock 
Rogers Week here. Our staff member of the week is Ryan Rogers. It's a blessing there on Deacon's Wife Week. This is Aubin with the Lord for her. And our pastor week is Pastor Perry Dazel, Dazel, uh, Central Valley Baptist Church in Manteca. And that is the nephew of the Wilkerson's. And uh, so, uh, and Miss Wanda, uh, she's down there at his church when she's not here at our church. And so we have to share her from time to time there. But uh, she's coming back on Thanksgiving. And so, uh, there's Perry Sr. who runs a, a home there for, for men down there in the Ripon area, I believe. And then Perry Jr. is the pastor there of the church there in Manteca. And we thank the Lord uh, for, uh, for them and the ministry there. And then uh, Missionary of the Week is the Owl family to Hong Kong. And this is their October letter. It says, uh, Dear Pastor Crane, friends, during this third wave of COVID-19 cases that began in July, the government implemented stricter stricter regulation in hopes of stopping the rising number of infected people. Schools were once again closed and children were taught at home. Groups were limited to no more than two people, which made it impossible to have church services. People were once again confined to their homes and discouraged uh, from going out unless absolutely necessary. Schools were not allowed to open uh, until the first week of September, uh, and even uh, when they did, children were not allowed to be at the school. This meant that the beginning of the school year had to begin online with many uncertainties and glitches as we have tried to make it work. Thankfully, the number of cases has gone down since then, allowing the government to start opening up schools again. Uh, Kafu Baptist Church Preschool was able to open uh, again the third week of September with just two of the four grades starting. Uh, we had, uh, had to have more uh, policies in place to make sure that our young uh, ages two to five were kept safe. Uh, from new hand, san uh, hand sanitizer dispensers and air pur purifiers to protective masks and shields for each child. Every detail had to be thought out uh, through. Uh, not only uh, did we have this new learning curve to adjust to, uh, the government has only allowed schools to open for half a day, meaning that every everything had to be done in four hours. Please continue to pray for our ministries and the families and teachers uh, of our school. There are so many uh, new normal, uh, it is easy to get discouraged and overwhelmed. Uh, the national security law, which was passed on the 1st of July, criminalizes uh, secession, subversion, terrorism, and collusion with foreign forces. Although the law seems to be beneficial for a government to have in place, many people believe it was written ex uh, in extremely vague terms to allow Beijing to have the power uh, over how the law should be interpreted. Some key provisions of the law state that uh, some cases may be tried in mainland China. Trials can be held behind closed doors, man uh, uh, management of foreign non-government organizations and new agencies will be strengthened or controlled, he says. Uh, these changes have caused uh, a great concern for many locals. Uh, with this concern, many of the locals have expressed interest in and are making arrangements to leave Hong Kong. Recently, the British government relaxed measures to allow uh, residents born before 1997 uh, to have a pathway to British citizenship. At least four faithful families from Kafu Baptist Church uh, are uh, making plans to take advantage of this. Though this will affect our church family greatly, we understand the concern many have about their future. Please pray for wisdom as we minister to those who find themselves at a crossroads. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you. Thank you so much for your prayers and support in Christ uh, and as the Owl family. And they have a couple of prayer requests, um, health from the virus, wisdom to minister, and that church uh, to be uh, opened back up again. Okay. All right. Under new requests, uh, if you could pray for uh, some of my wife's family. This is family in Canada, um, and uh, they have uh, COVID, and so just pray uh, for them and then we didn't i don't know did did we get the mission the cards out probably didn't so let's uh miss vicky what do we have uh i got my son he's kid number three his best friend drowned over the weekend in puerto rico he was down there and he drowned. okay so let's pray for miss vicky's son's friend friend's family any other cards all right yep 
pray for my uncle because on in January he's supposed to have surgery on his knee. This and Uncle Bill? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. I think we've got him on here. And then my All right. my cousin, my uncle's uh, my cousin, she's supposed to have a, a kidney transplant. What's her name? Uh, uh, it's not Sarah's. That's right. I had the same problem with all my cousins too. So, all right, we'll, we'll get it from you later. All right, so pray for uh, for Steve's cousin as well. All right, anybody else? All right, let's go ahead and uh, go to prayer.
All right, well, our ushers come for the offering. Then our star student, why don't you come and meet Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for the opportunity we have to be in church. Lord, I pray that you would uh, bless this offering and bless the sermon tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Turn to Genesis chapter 22. And uh, do we have a lapel mic around Genesis 22? Genesis 22. That's how we record, so. Genesis 22. And uh, I know I moved some folks around, so it's not anybody's fault. Um, Help me out though, and try to try to take up the spots that we can, uh, especially over in the other building. Um, try not to move the chairs around too much and everything. Um, we definitely want to, you know, to be able to try to be showing that we're doing the best we can to, uh, um, you know, abide by all the things that we can. And so, help me out with that. Uh, you know. Uh, um, obviously, uh, you know, the governor's moved a lot of uh, counties back into different tiers, and, uh, you know, we want to be able to do the best we can uh, to, to meet those guidelines as best we can. And so, uh, anyway, help me out with that, uh, if you would, uh, and especially um, ways that you can help and uh, uh, would be, if you're here earlier, try to sit up closer. All right. I know everybody loves the back rows. OK, but uh, help me out with that. All right. We have people that come in late. And uh, if you've ever come in late, you don't want to have to walk all the way to this front row. All right. And so uh, help me. Some people, please take the take the front rows here. Our brother Cable's holding down. All right. Uh, and uh, I put all the obvious kids on the front row uh, the other day and take on the cameras. And uh, that helps us out. And then also try to, um, uh, over there, you know, when we have sets of three and sets of four, um, try, to, try to find seats that match the number of people you have in your group. So we have a set of six chairs or seven chairs. Try not to, you know, if you're by yourself, don't take that row, all right? Uh, try to find the one that helps, uh, helps us with that. That's just going to help us out there uh, to do that. And I sure would appreciate that. Um, <laughs> On Wednesday, I don't want to have to like spot out everybody all the time. It's just it's a lot of work. And so anyway, help me out with that. And I appreciate it. Take a lot of load off of me there. Genesis chapter 22. And tonight we're going to talk about Isaac. And uh, not that Isaac, but I'm glad Isaac is here for <laughs> Isaac. All right. Uh, and uh, Genesis chapter 22, verse number one, the Bible says, It came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham. And said unto him, uh, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And Abraham uh, rose up early in the morning, and saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave uh, the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with uh, the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took uh, the fire in his hand and a knife 
And they uh, went, both of them, together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham, his father, and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb. And I always like that statement there. Uh, you know, it's, you can almost take it two different ways. God's going to provide it for himself. And he did literally provide himself as the lamb. You think about it that way. Uh, pretty neat thought there. It says, for a burnt uh, offering. So they went, both of them, together. And let's pray. Lord, I pray that you bless the Bible study today. God, I pray that we think about a few truths here. Uh, Lord, a lot of different truths tonight. God, I pray that you would uh, help it to be uh, organized. And God, I pray that you would help us to uh, uh, be able to get some uh, truth from your word tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, Isaac is uh, is known in that list uh, we call the patriarchs. You know, there's Abraham, Isaac, uh, Jacob, and Joseph, you know, the patriarchs. Uh, honestly, of the patriarchs, though, he's probably the one that's not as much as said about not a whole lot said about Isaac uh, as far as his uh, accomplishments. Uh, definitely more said about Abraham and uh, Jacob and Joseph. All right, Isaac, not as much said about. Uh, but it is interesting in chapter 22, we see that Isaac is a type of Jesus Christ. He is a great picture here of Jesus Christ. And, um, and God, I believe, made it that way. Uh, notice in this, of course, Abraham is told, uh, you know, take your son and uh, go sacrifice him. And I... I don't know about you, but uh, that would take a lot of faith there. Amen. Uh, first of all, I'd be thinking, all right, uh, you know, maybe I had too many pepperoni pizzas or something. So, you know, I, I just, I'm not sure about this. Think about the kind of faith you would have to have to say, I know that God is speaking to me and this is what he's saying. I mean, every ounce of your uh, ability would say, uh, no, this, I, I've got to have this wrong. God's not saying this to me. Um, Quite a bit of faith there by Abraham. Uh, but notice some of the similarities here. First of all, look at verse 2. It says, and he said, take now thy son. What's that next phrase? Thy only, only son. Now, is Isaac actually Abraham's only son? No, he had Ishmael with Hagar, all right, 14 years before. All right. Uh, it's interesting, though. We see a couple things. First of all, God's forgiveness there. All right, uh, in that uh, uh, he, he does uh, forgive Abraham for the indiscretion there. Uh, but it's interesting here, uh, Isaac is a type of Jesus Christ, uh, uh, God's only begotten son. And here we see uh, Abraham, uh, God tells Abraham, take your son, your only son. What a picture here, a uh, picture of Jesus Christ. And notice it says, and offer him. There for a burnt offering uh, upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee. And uh, oh, he says, and whom thou lovest, and uh, get thee into the land of Moriah. All right. So uh, we see here uh, uh, he commands him to take his only son, uh, his son that he loves. All right. Now, by the way, God loves his son. Right. Uh, and he uh, sent his only begotten son. And uh, notice the, the mountain. It's in the land of Moriah. Now, this is, always gives me a little bit of chills when I think about this. Uh, understand that Mount uh, Moriah is the same mountain area where the crucifixion took place. Uh, Isaac is walking up this mountain, and the Lamb of God is walking up the other side of the mountain. Uh, thousands of years later, the Lamb of God would walk up the same mountain and sacrifice himself. Here we have a beautiful picture here uh, that uh, God painted out there with Isaac uh, uh, going up on the same mountain. Uh, notice what else it says, uh, verse 3. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two uh, uh, of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. Uh, notice it took him three days to get there. Uh, by the way, uh, once again, another picture here. Uh, if you look in uh, Exodus chapter 12, uh, verse 3 and verse 6 tell us that the Passover lamb was selected on the 10th day 
and it was sacrificed on the 14th day. It was held for three days. Same idea here. The Passover lamb here. Uh, uh, Isaac picturing the lamb. Held for three days. By the way, that's got to be uh, three very miserable days for Abraham. Can you imagine that? Traveling, knowing what you're supposed to go do. And for three days, going to this place where you know God is wanting you to sacrifice your son. Uh, verse 5, and Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with uh, the ass and I, and the lad uh, will go yonder and worship, and look at this, and come again to you. Got to love the faith there of Abraham. He said, we're going to go and worship, and we're coming back. We're coming back. Uh, there's some faith right there. By the way, the book of Romans tells us that uh, Abraham that, had that faith. The book of Hebrews also tells us. Uh, it said that Abraham, in his mind, he said, well, uh, if God has me sacrifice Isaac, he'll raise him back up. Because he promised. He promised that my seed was going to come through Isaac. And so it's got to come through Isaac. So if, I, if he calls me to sacrifice him, he will raise him back up. There was some faith there uh, that Abraham had. Uh, notice verse 6. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac, his son. Uh, what's the wood? The wood that Isaac would be laid out on for the sacrifice. Do you see the picture there? Jesus carried his own wood up the mountain. The same wood that he would be laid out on. The same wood that he would die on. Isaac here carries his wood up. Uh, the wood uh, that he would be laid on. Uh, verse 7, And Isaac uh, spake unto Abraham his father, and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Good question here. Dad, we got everything we need except for the lamb. Where's that going to come from? Inquisitive young men. And uh, Abraham, of course, makes that statement. God will provide himself a lamb. Uh, understand uh, that uh, uh, Abraham at this point, uh, so he had uh, Isaac at 100 years of age, uh, age and he is uh, called a young man at this point, a lad. He's probably a teenager at this point. All right, so which means that uh, Abraham, you know, is, is probably upwards of 115 years old. All right, understand uh, Abraham's not going to wrestle Isaac down on this altar. Can you imagine how this conversation went? Son, just want you to know, God told me to sacrifice you. I don't know. My, my son loves me. My son trusts me. I'm not sure that he'd get up on top of the altar and let me uh, strike him with a knife and then uh, set him on fire. I wouldn't want to do it, and I don't think he would trust me that way. Uh, Isaac gives himself up. By the way, just like Jesus. Isn't that exactly what Jesus did? Amen. Jesus said, not my will, but thy will be done. Uh, the physical part of Jesus didn't want to die on the cross, but he said, uh, I will. I will. He voluntarily gave himself up. A beautiful picture here uh, that God uses Isaac very early on. By the way, do you notice the trust that Isaac had in his father? I think it's a good thing for uh, young Christian kids to trust their Christian parents. I think that's a good thing. And uh, we see that here. Uh, notice uh, Isaac learned uh, quite a bit from his dad. Let's look at uh, Genesis chapter 24. And we're just going to kind of highlight some of these. We're not going to read these chapters because there's, there's multiple chapters that deal with Abraham and Isaac here, kind of mixed together. But in Genesis chapter 24, we have... Uh, now uh, Abraham uh, getting a wife for Isaac. And uh, this is kind of an odd uh, thing for us. But Abraham uh, says uh, to his good servant Eliezer, you go back to where I came from and pick a girl and bring her back. Don't pick one of the Canaanite girls here. We don't want any of them. Don't want any of the worldly girls. Uh, go back, back to where I came from. And pick one of those. Now, first of all, think about this. Isaac trusted his dad to pick his wife. Actually, Isaac trusted his dad to pick his servant. 
to pick his wife. That's a lot of faith. Now, I love my dad, but I don't think I would have trusted him to pick my wife. Some of the girls he thought that I should have gone after. Uh, so. No, thank you. Could I say, though, uh, you know, I, I don't believe in, in, in arranged marriages per se. But could I say, young people, your parents ought to have a say in who you marry? That's right, Pat. Come on. Amen. You're dumb as rocks if you don't ask them if they like the person. Amen. That's right. If you're not get, if your, your parents are Christian parents and you're not getting the green light from them, that's just dumb. That's right. Come on. That's dumb. Look, uh, your parents love you more than anybody else in this world. <laughs> All right? They do. They care about you more than anybody else. Uh, and they're not Twitter painted. Remember Bambi, right? Twitter painted. You know, something happens when you uh, fall in love, you know, you, you start getting messed up in the mind. You don't see right. Your parents see quite a bit, though. They see all the, uh, the the faults that you can't see in the other person. They see all the different things that the other person, uh, you, you know, you you look at and you see a beautiful face and, and sweet smelling uh, perfume or a uh, nice smelling cologne. You see strong muscles, you know, and, and a full head of hair and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Your parents see uh, whether they're sloppy or not. Your parents see how they treat their parents. Well, if you want to know how they treat you, uh, just see how they treat your parents, uh, their parents. Uh, Isaac trusted his dad. He trusted him. Uh, it's interesting. Abraham says, in fact, uh, look at uh, verse 6, chapter 24, verse 6. Notice what he tells Eliezer, the servant. Now, if I were Eliezer, I, I think, man, I'm on the hot seat here. I've been tasked with picking the boss's son's wife. I mean, this might be a fireable offense if I bring that back. You know, I mean, not only are you picking for your boss, but, you know, you're hoping that she's pretty in the eyes of his son, who isn't going to see her until the wedding day. Uh, that's going to scare you there. Notice, though, uh, verse 6. It says, And Abraham said unto him, Beware that uh, thou that thou bring not my son thither again. It's interesting. Eliezer says, uh, uh, well, you know, how am I going to find this girl? You know, what, what should I do? And uh, Abraham says, uh, you're going to go there and God's going to show you the right girl. And uh, by the way, whatever you do, don't bring him back there. You bring her here. Don't bring him back there. Kind of interesting. Not going backwards in life. Uh, I don't want him back where I was commanded to leave. I want him to stay in obedience uh, where we're supposed to be in the land that God has promised me and God has promised him. He needs to stay in this land. Uh, you go and get her and bring her back. Don't, don't, don't bring him there. And of course, uh, Eliezer, you're a little nervous here. Uh, well, what if she doesn't come? And Abraham says, well, she won't come and uh, you're released from it. But basically, Abraham said, uh, God's going to take care of it. And you know the story, of course, uh, uh, the guy prayed and said, uh, you know, whoever, uh, uh, you know, offers to, to give drink to my camels as, as well when I ask, uh, let her be the one first girl, Rebecca. Uh, and uh, and he, he says, wow, well, you know, uh, while he was still praying it, God sent her. Pretty a neat story there. Uh, but Isaac learned from his dad. He learned to, uh, to trust his, his uh, dad in those things. Uh, chapter 25, look at chapter 25. And I would say to young people, you ought to learn from your parents. You ought to. You ought to learn from them. Uh, they got stuff to teach. And Isaac learned some things. Uh, look at chapter 25, verse number 21. It says, And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. You see that uh, Isaac must have learned how to pray. By the way, it's kind of interesting here that uh, Sarah was barren, at least in the beginning, right? 
And uh, in fact, uh, uh, Abraham and Sarah, you know, jumped the gun there a little bit. Uh, they were getting a little concerned, uh, you know, hey, is uh, God going to take care of uh, uh, the promise that he said? He said, we're going to have a child. And remember, of course, they lost a little faith there. And, and uh, Sarah said, uh, take Hagar uh, and she, she can have children for me. And that wasn't God's plan. It's interesting here, though, that now Isaac is praying for Rebecca. Why? Well, God promised, uh, look, uh, Abraham's seed is going to come through Isaac. Uh, the great nation is going to come through Isaac, which means that Isaac has to have kids. Now his wife is barren. It's interesting, uh, Isaac learned something here. Maybe I need to just pray about it. He learns that. By the way, it's great when we can teach our kids not to follow some of our mistakes. And uh, he, he avoids that one. Uh, he learns how to pray. Uh, notice Isaac followed his father's example. Um, and we're going to see how he followed his example in, uh, in learning from his mistakes. We saw that just now. And also later on how he followed his example in making the same mistake. Look at chapter 26. Uh, chapter 26. Look at verse 1. And there was famine in the land besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. Do you remember that famine that we talked about just a couple weeks ago? At Abraham, there was famine, and Abraham said, oh, there's famine. I better go down to Egypt. Right? And you remember what happened there in Egypt? Uh, uh, he, he said, oh, boy, you know, Sarah, you're beautiful. Just tell him you're my sister, and caused all kinds of problems. I mean, he's lying to Pharaoh. He's lying to the Egyptians. Caused all kinds of problems. Um, notice what Isaac does here. Famine hits, and it says, And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gerar. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt. Don't do what your daddy did. Don't go to Egypt. By the way, he doesn't. Look, it says, I Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Sojourn in this land. Stay right where you are. You're in Gerar. Stay there. Uh, sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee and will bless thee, uh, for unto thee and unto thy seed I will give uh, these countries, and, and, uh, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. Uh, he listens to God. Uh, whereas Abraham, uh, we see, had to learn this, uh, uh, boy, you know, uh, there's famine. Uh, what am I going to do? Uh, I should go where there's food and make some mistake. He learns from that. He says, a dad made that mistake. I'm not going to make that mistake. By the way, young people, now your parents do make mistakes. Learn from them. Learn from them. You know, uh, you ought to be a better person than your parents because you ought to be able to learn from their mistakes. And that's uh, uh, what Isaac did. He learned from their mistakes, uh, his mistakes. Notice uh, he didn't follow his example in another way, though. Look at verse 6 of chapter 26. Uh, it says, and Isaac dwelt in Gerar, and the men of the place asked him of his wife, and he said, she is my sister. Same thing that Abraham did. And I think Abraham did it twice. My memory serves me right. I think he did it two different times. And is that right? I think so. Yep. All right. Uh, the theologian in the back there, some of his telling me. I, I'm right there. All right. I didn't look it up, but I think so. Abraham did it twice. Isaac does it once here. By the way, what a what a brave man here. Just just uh, I'm afraid that they might kill me because to get to you. So just tell them, like uh, put the wife out in front there, protect me. By the way, you know it's interesting how this kind of stuff, we see how this kind of stuff passes down a little bit. Abraham does it, Isaac does it, correct it. And you know, when Jacob starts coming back. Uh, to, to, to meet his parents just before they die. And Esau is, is starting to come with uh, his uh, group of 400 men. You know what Jacob does? <clears throat> the turkey puts his two uh, lesser wives, the, the, the handmaidens, up in front. Then puts Leah, his other least favorite wife. And then finally in the back is him and Rachel. And in his thinking, he's thinking, well, you know, if uh, Esau attacks this company, you know, we're in the back. We can take off and get out of here before 
Uh, yeah, just put your wives up there to protect you. It's interesting how some of these things come. Notice uh, he lies, just like Abraham did. Could I say, parents, that uh, if you don't take care of those besetting sins, your kids will pick them right up. And we see this. We see that Isaac is his father's son. You ever see that? You know, uh, uh, my mom will say, uh, you know, you've got that same honor and grin that your dad has. And I do when I'm trying to pull uh, pull something. You know, uh, I do. Got the nervous grin. Um, <laughs> you know what? Uh, I, I see things in my, my dad that, uh, that I have in me. And uh, I know I got them from him. Not all were good. Uh, you know, we have that. Uh, you know, maybe some of you have a hot temper because dad or mom had a hot temper. You know, uh, maybe some of you are prone to, uh, you know, be discouraged because mom or dad was prone to discouragement. Uh, maybe uh, some uh, pick up something else. You know what? If we don't deal with these things, our kids pick them up. They do. That's why it's important that you deal with things because your kids are watching you. Uh, notice he learned how to worship God. Look at chapter 26, verse 24. It says, the Lord appeared unto him the same night. And said, I am the God of Abraham, thy father. Fear not, for I am with thee and will bless thee and multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake. And he built an altar there and called upon the, the, the name of the Lord and pitched his tent there. And there Isaac's servants digged a well. Notice uh, he built an altar and prayed and called on God's name, just like his daddy did. Daddy taught him how to worship. By the way, daddy, teach your kids how to worship. Teach them how to pray. Teach them how to come to church all the time. Teach them those things. Not mama's job. It's daddy's job to teach them those things. Yeah. You know, a lot of times it's mama's that bring uh, the kids to church, and it shouldn't be. It should be daddy's. Daddy's teaching these things. He did do that. Uh, notice, uh, <clears throat> notice the testimony that Isaac had. Look at verse 28. Uh, here with uh, Abimelech, king of the Philistines, who he had had this conflict with uh, over uh, the wife. By the way, it is interesting that uh, there was something different here. In this case, in, in Abraham's case, the Egyptians tried to take his wife, and God says, "We're going to kill. You know, I'm going to kill you if you do this." And Pharaoh said, "Oh, hey, I'm sorry, I didn't know." You know, uh, in this case, uh, he was telling everybody she's a sister. Nobody. Uh, uh, nobody apparently tried to take her, and uh, Abimelech watches him and says, uh, that's not your sister. What are you doing to us? And then he chews him out and says, uh, don't you do that again. And uh, by the way, it's bad when the heathen have to tell us about morals. Uh, but that's what happened here in this case. Notice, though, he did get a good testimony with him eventually. Look at verse 28. And they said, they have a little falling out here, and they tell them, look, uh, you're, you're making too much here. Get away from us. Go somewhere else. They come and, and talk to him later on. Look at verse 28. And they said, we saw certainly that the Lord was with thee. By the way, what a good uh, testimony when the heathen can say, hey, we can see that God's with you. But look at verse 29. That thou wilt do us no hurt, as we have not touched thee, and as we have done unto thee nothing but good, and have sent thee away in peace, thou art now the blessed of the Lord. Uh, two verses, Abimelech, the king of the Philistines, says, you know what, uh, God's with you. God's blessing you. And that's a great testimony there. Isaac had a good testimony. Uh, people looked at his life and said, uh, boy, I can tell he he's one of God's children. By the way, people ought to be able to look at you and say, hey, uh, that's one of God's children. That's one of God's children. Uh, notice uh, Isaac uh, has boys eventually here. Uh, look at chapter um, 25. Look at chapter 25. I will say the one area that Isaac, uh, I think, really kind of struggled with is his boys. Uh, if, if you could say some negative stuff here about Isaac, uh, maybe it would be in, in some of the ways that he raised his boys. Look at Genesis chapter 25. 
This is right after Isaac prays to God that uh, he would uh, give uh, Rebekah children, and God does answer that prayer. Look at verse 22. And the children struggled together within her, and she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord, and the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. Uh, God says, uh, look, you're going to have two boys. They're going to be two great nations, but the elder one is going to serve the younger one. I'm going to use the younger one in a greater way than I'm going to use the elder one. Now, that's not the way it was done back in those days. It was the firstborn that was the great one. It was the firstborn that was the leader. It was the firstborn that got uh, all the blessings and all that kind of stuff. And yet uh, God had told Rebecca, it's going to be the younger one. It's going to be the younger one. All right. Uh, he knew that. In fact, uh, uh, hold your spot here. Turn to Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9. Even Paul talks about this in Romans chapter 9. And it's interesting. Uh, Paul mentions that this was God's will. It's God's will. By the way, you know, God has a different will for our kids. He sure does. And sometimes, if we're not careful, we want to impose what we want on our kids. Right. And God had a specific will for both of these guys. Notice Romans chapter 9. Uh, look at verse number 10. It says, not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. Uh, what do you get the idea here? They hadn't even been born yet. And God said, I'm planning on him doing this, and I'm planning on him doing this. Uh, I've got this, this avenue for this boy, and I've got this avenue for this boy. And uh, the younger one is uh, going to be the one in charge. The elder one's going to serve the younger one. Had nothing to do, by the way, at this point with their works. It was uh, God's plan, different plans. Look at verse 12. And it, uh, it was said unto her, uh, the elder shall serve the younger, as is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Uh, what shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. Now, it's interesting that God, uh, Paul uses this story and says, you know, the plan that God has is never unrighteous. <laughs> you know, sometimes uh, we look at our kids and say, well, you know, I think that they ought to, you know, that, that this one ought to do this and this one ought to do this. And we kind of get our plans and our ideas. And, you know, sometimes God says, you know, I want this and I want this. And it's not what we want. And we think, well, you know, uh, uh, I really like this kid because this kid, uh, uh, you know, can do this. And I, this is what I think that this kid ought to do. And uh, God says, no, I don't want him to do that. I want him to do this. And we say, well, you know, I, I think that this kid ought to be the one that, you know, uh, kind of does this. And, and uh, God says, no, uh, uh, I think that this kid ought to do that. And sometimes we look and scratch our head and say, uh, God, are you sure that one? <laughs> Not that we don't love our kids, you know, I mean the same, but uh, you look at, you know, and some kids are different than other kids, right? All kids are different. And sometimes we look at one kid and say, uh, you know what, I, I don't see that kid doing this, but I can see this kid doing this. And sometimes God says, I know, you know, I want that kid to do this. By the way, I'm a preacher today, and uh, when I was growing up, I was the quiet kid. I told you that. I got an F in school uh, for, for class participation because I didn't participate. First grade, teacher gave me an F. Can you believe that? The only F I ever got in my report card, too. By the way, I'm still a little bit bitter about that. Uh, <laughs> class participation. Now I can't shut up, right? Yeah. I don't have to say amen about that, right? <laughs> God had different plans for him. Now notice what happens here. Turn back to Genesis chapter 25. Genesis chapter 25. Look at verse 28. Genesis 25, verse 28, it says, And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison. But Rebekah loved Jacob. Isaac has a thing. He really, he, he favors Esau. 
By the way, in, in, in parenting, that's not a good thing. It's just not a good thing to favor your kids. Your kids are different. They all have strengths and they all have weaknesses. Uh, but sometimes you're not careful. Uh, uh, maybe there's a certain strength in one of the kids that you kind of like. And you say, you know, I really kind of like this kid. Uh, well, you better not be showing them that. Each kid is special in a very special way. I have three kids, and they're all different. And they're all very special to me in different ways. And by the way, I could go through and tell you uh, the different things. Uh, my boy, he's a brainiac. <laughs> They don't chip off the old block, right? <laughs> my wife is like, what are you talking about this to chip off of my block? But uh, my youngest has so much love. So much love. They are completely different. Educationally, she's not very good. But uh, the things that she offers are completely different. Than the things that he offers. And I love them both. And yes, I do love my oldest daughter too, just because she's watching, right? <laughs> she has different things. Don't want to favor them. But you know, sometimes as parents, we can, we can get a liking for a certain thing or a certain quality. And notice here that uh, Isaac has that very thing. It's interesting that the Bible says that Rebecca just loves Jacob. But it says, Isaac loves Esau. Why? Because he did eat of his venison. I like that boy. He's a hunter. And I like it. And he can make a mean steer steak there. I like it. Sometimes we get those uh, liking things. And uh, Isaac starts having ideas about Esau here. Now, to be fair, uh, the Bible does say that God told Rebekah that uh, Jacob was going to be the one. I would assume that Rebecca would have told Isaac. Now, maybe she kept it a secret the whole time. Um, but I'm assuming that they probably, at some point in time in the course of their life, she probably said, you know what, God appeared to me, you know, and, uh, or, you know, God sent a message to me and told me that uh, uh, Jacob's going to be the one. Uh, nonetheless here, uh, he, uh, Isaac starts planning what he's going to do. Uh, he uh, intends a few things. Uh, uh, notice uh, he loved Esau for what he did for him. Uh, he did not instill in Esau any kind of value for the spiritual. And that's really a, a heartbreak here. Uh, Esau is the one who, uh, when it came time for his uh, birthright, sold his birthright for a, a bowl of soup. What was the birthright? The birthright was, uh, this is your claim to be the spiritual leader of the family. And Esau looked at that and said, well, spiritual leader, you know, I mean, really, uh, what good is that? If I'm going to starve to death, you know, uh, I might as well get a bowl of soup out of it. He threw away his spiritual leadership for a bowl of soup. No spiritual, uh, he, you know, Isaac did not seem to instill that in him. Uh, he married heathen girls. Look at chapter 26, verse 34. Esau was 40 years old. He, uh, and he took a, a, to wife Judith, the daughter of Barry, the Hittite, and Bashamath, the daughter of Ellen, the Hittite, which were a grief of mine unto Isaac and to Rebekah. So let me ask you a question. Do you think Esau asked his parents, hey, do you think these two girls are good for me? I don't think so. Don't think so. They were a grief of uh, mine to him. Uh, Esau. I want. You know, I like these two girls. They're pretty, and they're what I want. Kind of like Samson. Get her for me. <laughs> uh, not uh, like uh, Isaac, who, who said, I'm going to trust Dad to help me do the right thing here. But I say again, uh, kids, you ought to trust your parents to help you do the right thing. You ought to. Uh, uh, Esau did not do that. Uh, notice uh, what else here. Uh, Notice uh, Isaac and Rebekah had their own agendas here. What did Isaac say? I want to give Esau the blessing. What did Rebekah say? I want to get him to give Jacob the blessing. By the way, that's pretty bad if you're on parents and you're not on the same page there. They're trying to do that. Look at chapter 27. It says, and it came to pass when Isaac was old and his uh, eyes were dim so that he could not see. 
He called Esau, his eldest son, and said unto him, My son, and he said unto him, Behold, here am I. And he said, Behold, now I am old, and I know not the day of my death. Now therefore, take, I pray thee, uh, thy weapons, and thy quiver, and thy bow, and go out into the field, and take uh, me some venison, and make me savory meat that I love, and bring it to me that uh, I may eat, and that my soul may bless thee before I die. All right? Now, uh, just so you know, this was something else that fathers did in this time. They had the birthright, then they had the blessing. The blessing always, uh, generally always went to the oldest son as well. And that was kind of saying, I'm passing off the leadership uh, of the family now to you. You're going to be the head. And here uh, Isaac says, Esau, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to give this blessing to you. And by the way, what did God said? The elder is going to serve the younger. What did Isaac say? I want Esau to be in charge. He starts doing his own thing. Now, by the way, Rebecca doesn't help in the matter. She tells Jacob, hey, hurry up, go out there and get a, a calf, you know, let's kill it. I can make the meat taste just like the meat that your dad likes. And uh, Jacob says, well, you know, my brother, you know, he's a hairy man. And she says, don't worry, I got that figured out. Uh, I'm going to cut off the, the, the goat's hair and we're going to put it on your arms. And think about how hairy Esau must have been. When you get fooled by goat's hair, all right, that guy must have been hairy. Uh, nonetheless, uh, uh, she deceives her own husband. We're not even on the same page here. Uh, here's two parents wanting their own agenda. Isaac saying, I want him to be the, uh, the, the blessed one. You could argue to say, well, Rebecca knew that it should have been Jacob, uh, but doesn't she think that God could have taken care of it? I don't think lying to your husband and going around that way is the way to do what God wants you to do. Yet that's exactly what she does. By the way, you can ask the question, did God tell them to do the blessing at this point in time? Isaac got up one day and said, boy, you know, I, I can't see very well anymore. I'm getting kind of old, and I'm afraid I'm going to die. Um, why don't you go out and make that savory meat? By the way, a little fleshly stuff here. Kind of get me in the right mood. Work me up so I can bless you and give this blessing. Isaac was afraid he was going to die. Do you know Isaac lived at least 20 more years? <laughs> at least. Uh, we know that Jacob left after this and was gone for 20 years and came back and his dad wasn't dead yet. So he lived at least another 20 years, minimum, maybe longer. Uh, they jumped the gun on the blessing part. They said they wanted to do it. Uh, I, Isaac had his uh, in mind. Rebecca said, I'm going to help God, you know, do what he wanted to do, and, and she got in there and messed things up. Uh, they weren't on the same page. Uh, they taught Jacob how to be a deceiver. Look at verse 12, chapter 27. I'm almost done, by the way. Chapter 12, verse, uh, uh, chapter 27, verse 12. Uh, <laughs> Jacob asked, and he says, My father, preadventure, will fill me, and I shall seem to be to him as a deceiver. No, you aren't going to seem to be a deceiver. You are a deceiver, Jacob. You put goat skins on you and uh, uh, and you make him think that you're Esau and you tell him you're Esau, uh, you are deceiving your dad. It's nothing about seeming to be a deceiver. That's who you are. By the way, that's exactly what Jacob was named. The, word, the, the name Jacob means deceiver. That's what it actually means. Sorry, Jacob. All right. Uh, <laughs> shift the eyes back there. All right. Uh, they taught him how to do that. Rebecca taught him how to be a deceiver. How sad was that? Uh, Isaac made decisions based off of feeling, not on the word. Look, look at uh, verse 18. And he came into his father, and this is Jacob, and he said, My father, and he said, Here am I, who art thou, my son? And Jacob uh, said uh, unto his father, I am Esau, thy firstborn, and I have done according to the, that thou badest me. Arise, I pray thee, and see, uh, sit and eat of my venison, that thy soul may bless me. And Isaac said unto his son, how is it that thou hast found it so quickly, my son? And he said, because the Lord thy God brought it to me. Oh, boy, using God in your deception here. Not a good thing here. Verse 22, and Jacob went near unto Isaac, his father, and he felt him and said, the voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. Do you notice that Jacob or Isaac made the decision based on what he felt, not on what he heard? By the way, parents, uh, we make bad decisions when we say, 
boy, I feel like this is what I ought to do with my kids and say, instead of saying, this is what the Bible says I should do with my kids. You see, Isaac felt like Esau should have been the one, but he wasn't supposed to be the one. Isaac felt like uh, he was uh, blessing uh, the right person. And by the way, God did make him bless the right person, but he didn't know it. God did it in spite of it. Sometimes we go off of our feelings and not on the word. Then he blames Jacob. Look at verse 35. Uh, Esau comes back, finds out that uh, Jacob is, has stolen the blessing. And Isaac says uh, uh, to, to Esau, he says, uh, and he said, thy brother came in with subtlety and has taken away thy blessing. That is true. Jacob did come in and, and deceived and got the blessing. But did he really take it away or did God give him the blessing? It was always his blessing. It was God's will before he was born that he was going to get that blessing. And yet uh, Isaac didn't see it. He said, uh, I wanted it this way and uh, I got tricked. Oh, no, that's not, not that's not the way it is. He allows uh, Esau to go on in, into rebellion. Uh, Esau wants to kill Jacob. Esau then goes and marries some more bad women and uh, goes on and lives his life. Uh, Isaac has to send Jacob back to the land where Abraham came from so that he doesn't get killed by his brother. And you know, the truth is, is uh, sometimes we don't think about this. Did God actually tell him to send him away? I don't see that. It's interesting that Abraham said, whatever you do, don't take Isaac back to the land. And what is, uh, by the way, that was Rebecca too. Rebecca says, uh, I'm afraid uh, my son is going to get killed by Esau. And then she kind of tells uh, uh, Isaac, hey, you know, I'm concerned because, you know, he, you know, he might get these uh, heathen women just like uh, Esau has. Uh, why don't you send him back home? You say, is that a problem? Do you know what happened to him while he was back home for 20 years back there? Uh, he marries four different women. Um, picks Rachel because she's beautiful. Why? No parents to help him. By the way, well, when did it ever say that uh, you're supposed to pick somebody, you know, like they're supposed to be the most beautiful person in all the world? Look, can I, can I just... Be honest here. I know this might be hard for you to believe. I am not the most handsome man in all the world. <laughs> and my wife married me knowing that. Because somehow, somewhere in the fairy tale land, we think that, uh, you know, you're supposed to be marrying the most beautiful or the most handsome person, you know. Uh, you know, you kiss the frog and it turns into a prince. After you get married, you ought to think they're the most beautiful person in all the world. But uh, why is beauty such a big thing. I'm not saying to marry ugly, but uh, <laughs> you know, there ought to be some character qualities there. Truth is, is Jacob married four different women. Three of them, uh, two of them were the handmaids of the, the two that he married. Uh, sounds just like what happened with Sarah when she said to Abraham, marry Hagar, marry my handmaid. He does the same thing. Causes all kinds of family strife. Those women were fighting with each other all the time and their sons were fighting with each other. Cause all kinds of family strife. Cause family strife with Laban. And the truth is, is Leah was God's choice from the whole time. Had Isaac maybe sent a servant back and said, you know what? I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, you know, bring back the right woman. Uh, God could have done that. Uh, and said he sent uh, Jacob there. All kinds of family problems. Uh, by the way, Jacob was gone for 20 years. Comes back just in time for Isaac to die. I don't know whether Rebecca was alive or not. She might have missed her favorite son. Why? Because she got involved and said, I'm going to do you know, my agenda. I'm going to get it done. I'm going to kind of force it. Isaac was saying, I'm going to try to force this. And God says, this is my plan and I'm going to do it. And he did it, by the way, even though they were trying to force their way. Isaac does have a legacy. Well, let's look at these last two verses and we're done. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Isaac was a good man, did a lot of good things. We look at one area here where he kind of failed in some areas.
but I don't want you to leave thinking that he was a bad guy. Look at Hebrews chapter 11. He didn't make it in the hall of faith. Look at verse number 20. It says, uh, by faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. You know, God says, I'm going to put you in the hall of faith because you blessed those two boys like I told you to. And he did just that. And then finally, turn to Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8, last verse here. You think Isaac was a great guy? I think so. He did a lot of things, and I wish we could have talked about a lot of the things, but several times he prayed to God, and he, uh, the Bible says over and over and over, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Uh, he took on the God of his father, and he passed on the God to his son. He did just that. Notice Jesus talks about Isaac here. Look at Matthew chapter 8. Look at verse 11. It says, and I say unto you that many shall come from the east and from the west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. You know, Jesus said, hey, you know what? Someday when we're all in the kingdom, people are going to come from all over just to talk to them. By the way, some of those people are probably us. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for tonight. Thank you for these folks who have come and have been faithful. God, I pray that you'd help us uh, to have taken some of these truths from this Bible character and apply to our life. Lord, I pray especially for the young people. Lord, as so many points were for them. God, I pray that they would uh, trust their parents, their Christian parents. God, that they, they would uh, trust them, that they would uh, learn to let them into their lives and, and let them help them make good decisions. God, I pray that to parents, that we would... Uh, Pray for our children and seek you about what you would have for them. Not what we want, but what you have. God, I pray that we learn these truths in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed. Amen.